Algebra 2 honors, 10.2 logarithms and logarithmic functions. So logarithms have been around for a while and they're actually used a lot in mathematics, but they started out with this study of the universe and, you know, stars are 1 times 10 to the ninth or something, I don't even know, miles apart. And you got to multiply them, do all this nasty math with them. Well, they don't have calculators back then, and even if they did, it's still very challenging. So they learned to do logarithms, and you'll see why. If you take a logarithm of all of this, you can break it into a log of the first piece plus the log of the second piece. We won't actually do that in this lesson, but we'll start to show you how they work. Because um, they're complicated, they're a different way of thinking, and a lot of students freak out when they haven't seen this sort of thing before. Um, John Napier was one of many inventors. He's one that gets a lot of credit for it. And his logarithms actually weren't polished. They were uh, useful, but not 100% uh, correct until he got some help some from Frenchmen. John Napier was a, a Scottish uh, noble. Um, but anyway, he used them to multiply really big numbers. And the concept here is that if you can put something on a logarithmic scale, um, and sounds a really good example, you can actually compare things a lot easier than if you tried to say, oh, this has got an intensity of 10 to the 6th, 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 12th. People don't really get that. Um, so you have a logarithmic scale where you have things like uh, a pin dropping is zero decibels. This is a decibel scale. And then you go up to 20 decibels. People say, oh, that's only 20 more. Well, no, it's actually 200 times more because it's 10 squared. Uh, pardon me, 100 times more. 10 squared as opposed to 1. And that's a whisper. Um, and I'll skip a couple. You get up to uh, 10 to the 6th. And that's uh, 60 decibels. You can notice that logarithms are closely related to exponents because they just work off of that. And that's conversation, just people talking. And so on and so on. Uh, you get up to the really, really crazy loud sounds, 10 to the 12th, uh, 120 decibels, which is actually very damaging to the eardrums. That's a jet engine. That's why if you ever see people out working at airports, they are wearing uh, headsets because they will go deaf. Um, a lot of rock and roll bands have people with hearing problems, especially from the 70s and 60s, because they did not take care of their ears. They just say, hey, I'll tough it out, and they permanently damage their hearing. Um, it's one of many reasons when you're listening to music, don't play too loud. Uh, logarithms are very confusing, but just remember they're an inverse function of exponent, exponents. So we did this. Here's an exponential function. It goes up. To find the inverse of something, you simply say reflect it through the y equals x line. And that takes some getting used to. A lot of people can't do that. All right, so this is y equals log base a of x. And this is y equals a to the x. Call that the base. And it's the same over here. So that's nice. That's all the theory behind it. How do we actually apply it? Home, oh, by the way, notice the domain for logs. Your domain is only uh, x is greater than 0. You cannot put a negative in a log. It causes problems, but sort it out. So the only thing to remember for logs, and this is my best effort. A student taught me this. Base to the outside equals inside, B-O-I, base to the outside equals inside, 6 to the x equals 1. I will do that again. Base to the outside equals the inside, B-O-I, 6 to the x equals 1. You'll say, well, wait a minute, what did you just do? And I just rewrote it. These are equivalent 
statements. I'm just rewriting it. And I'm rewriting it to help you understand how it's put together. 2 to the negative fourth equals x. x to the third equals 125. At this point, people say, oh, well, I can solve that. That's x equals 5. And that's the point. We're going to evaluate these. And we're just getting used to working with logarithms. People, well, why do we do this? Oh, you'll have to wait and see. There's a lot that goes on with logarithms. But just getting you introduced is, you know, you're just taking your baby steps here. Backwards is a little trickier. Well, actually, it's not. It's a lot easier. I'm going to actually do this log base 10 of 10 to the third equals log base 10 of 1,000. I'm going to do it on both sides. Because the log, if the bases are the same, cancel. So we end up with log base 10 of 1,000 equals 3. And I always check it. 10 to the third equals 1,000. 10 to the third equals 1,000. Now, as you get better at it, you will learn to say base to the outside equals inside. Oh, I'm going the other way. Log base 9 base to the outside equals inside. Log base 2 3. Base to the outside equals inside. Base to the outside equals inside. So now, I have you evaluate them. Always set them equal to a variable. It makes it easier. 2 to the x equals 64. Play with your calculator. Turns out x equals 6. 2 to the 6 equals 64. So this equals 6. 6 to the 8th equals y, pardon me, 6 to the y equals 6 to the 8th, therefore y equals 8. Wait a minute, wait a minute, that's correct by the way. I thought we said earlier, log base 6 of 6 just cancels out, we could have just said y equals 8. Correct, you could have, there it is. So wait a minute, then that means if I see a 3 to the log 3, can I cancel that? Yep. And you're just left with a 4x minus 1. No, 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 I don't like doing that. I like doing this with the letter. It makes so much more sense to me. Then great, do that. 3 to the x equals 3 to the 4x minus 1. I can't call it x. i got to call it something else. We'll call it y. y equals 4x minus 1. And that's just our answer. Remember, I just made up y to... Help me do the problem. That's it. Solve them. 4 to the 5 halves equals n. Well, 4 to the 1 half is 2. So that's the same as saying 2 to the 5th. n equals 32. I apologize for doing that so quickly. You will have to practice a lot. Inequalities are kind of a hassle. 5 to the second has to be less than x, I think. Maybe it's greater than. Tricky. 25 has to be less than x. x has to be greater than 25. Hmm. I'm not so sure about that. Let me see. So, let's make x has to be greater than 25. Let's make it 125. Let's see what happens. 5 log base 5 of 125. So I'm just going to work on the left side. Forget this for a second. Find out what it equals. 5 to the y equals 125. This equals 3. Is 3 less than 2? No. I got my sign backwards. x is less than 25. Hmm. That's tricky. Yeah, it is. The inequality is a nightmare. Well, by the way, it can't be 0. So it's 0 is less than x is less than 25. I like to write everything in interval notation, so that's my answer. That's going to take some getting used to. Two log base fives, get rid of them. 
what's left over? P squared minus 2 equals P. P squared minus P minus 2 equals 0. P minus 2, P minus 1, plus 1. Good. P equals 2 or negative 1. Extraneous. Can't have a negative inside a log, like the domain I showed you earlier. Log base 10, I just left with 3x minus 4 is less than x plus 6, 2x less than 10, x less than 5. Hmm. Well, I've got to worry about that 0. x plus 6 has to be greater than 0. Can't equal 0. x has to be greater than negative 6. Well, that's not going to dominate, so I don't have to worry about that. 3x minus 4 has to be greater than 0. 3x has to be greater than 4. x has to be greater than 4 thirds. That will dominate. That tells me my answer is 4 thirds to 5. And I would put a number in there and test it because you can do log base 10, but that will work. Notice how confusing this is. It's a lot in one lesson. So you got to really work hard on your problems. Happy mathing.